Julia pulled her coat tighter around her as the heavy snow threatened to completely bury her. Finally, she reached her destination, a bridge over the fast Red River. She was almost completely frozen. The only thing that made her move was a strong desire to end it all. Julia hoped that the shock of her suicide would make her ex-fiancé feel guilty, ashamed, and horrified by her act, and he would be inconsolable in his grief. Murder, murder, suicide. Her fiancé, his new lover, and herself was the second option after suicide alone. The deciding factor was the estimated duration of his suffering. Julia hoped that he would live a long life and that the memories of what he did to her would haunt him throughout this time. His instant realization, right before she pulled the trigger, that he was about to be shot, would not have brought her much comfort. It took the lone young woman some time to get around the iron railings and steel beams. The bridge's designers clearly wanted to make suicide attempts more difficult. Julia was sweating under her parka by the time she got to the point where she could jump into the fast-moving river water without crashing into a pole along the way or getting stuck on one of the concrete bases used to secure the support poles. She was exhausted, so she paused, leaning against a beam to gather her strength and courage. A strong gust of cold wind quickly turned her sweat into an ice bath. Julia knew she needed to end this as soon as possible. Hanging on the ledge with one hand, she shouted as loudly as possible to the sky, Fuck you, Hank! Just as Julia was about to jump, she heard a man nearby shout, Crap! You almost scared me to death! Who the hell are you and what the fuck are you doing here? Julia nearly slipped and fell from the shock of hearing him. She looked to her left and saw a man sitting on another ledge, similar to the one she was on. She shouted back, Stay where you are! Don't you dare try to talk me out of jumping. You can't stop me. This is the only way out for me. What the hell are you talking about? I'm not trying to talk you out of anything. I came here to jump alone. Get out of here and leave me alone. You're a copycat. I came here first. If anyone needs to go, it's you. There was silence in the confrontation while the wind and cold increasingly penetrated their clothes. The man finally spoke. Hell! If they find out that two of us committed suicide, it will take attention away from my death and the reason why I committed suicide. I want my bitch wife to suffer as much as possible. Your suicide will confuse everything. I'm sorry I got angry at you, but please go away and let me jump alone. You can come back another time. I don't think I can do that. I have to jump tonight. I'm not sure I have the courage to do this again. Besides... I have nowhere to go. That cheating bastard kicked me out. After thinking a little, the man suggested, I have an idea. You can go to my house. My wife left to live with her lover. I'll give you the key to my house. Oh, if you don't mind, could you take my car to my house? It's parked at the far end of the bridge. I haven't thought about it before, but I really don't want to leave her here. Someone might accidentally bump into it. I don't want anyone else to suffer because of me, except my wife. Julia started crying. Damn you. You, you ruined all my plans. Did I ruin your plans? You ruined my plans. Everything I wanted to do tonight is now all ruined. In fact, nothing I've wanted to do lately has gone according to plan. Why should tonight be any different? Look, we're both freezing here. Why don't we both get out of here and figure out what to do? We can always jump later if we want. If you don't mind, I could really use a cup of hot coffee. I'm really cold. Where is your car? I came here on foot after leaving my car at the diner down the road. I think it's still open if you want to go there. Oh my God, lady, you must be frostbitten by now. Let's get in my car and go to the diner for coffee. Fine. Julia had difficulty getting down from the bridge. By the time she got out onto the road, the man had already driven up to her in his car. Luckily for her, by the time she got in, the heat in his car was already on. It took Julia a few minutes to warm up, although her fingers, toes, nose, and ears were still feeling the effects of the freezing weather. She looked at the man and answered the unasked question. Julia? He looked back at her and smiled. Kyle? When they arrived at the warm, 50s-style diner, there were only three other customers there. 
The large, buxom woman behind the counter greeted them with a wide smile. She was wearing a uniform and a name tag that said Betty. Hey, what brings you two into such terrible weather? Have you watched birds? When she smiled, lipstick was visible on her teeth. Kyle replied nonchalantly. Suicide. We came to jump off the bridge. Julia was shocked by his willingness to reveal their intentions. He smirked at the expression on her face. Waitress Betty calmly replied, It happens a lot here these days. My advice is that you should wait until it is warmer and light enough for people to see you. If you jump at night, it could be weeks before your bodies are found. What's the point of committing suicide if no one knows about it? So, you two, is it one of those lovers' things to commit suicide together so you can be united forever in the afterlife? Julia spoke. No, we just met. It was just a strange coincidence. I was planning to jump alone until he showed up and ruined my plans. Betty reacted seriously. Damn it. I was just joking about you two committing suicide. Did you two really try to jump off a bridge? Kyle said, We're just joking, gotcha. This is good. You know, they say that jumping off a bridge on an empty stomach is bad luck. Do you want to see the menu, or do you guys know what you want? I'd like coffee with sugar. Julia? Coffee with lots of milk and sugar. How about some pie? I bake them myself. I guarantee that my apple pie and homemade ice cream are the best you've ever tasted. Julia noted, I can't. I watch my weight. Kyle started laughing loudly. What? Have you considered committing suicide and are you worried about counting calories? Julia grinned. It doesn't make sense, does it? Miss Betty, I've changed my mind. I'll have this wonderful apple pie with two scoops of ice cream, please. Kyle responded, same for me. A few minutes later, two would-be jumpers sat across from each other in a booth with duct tape covering the holes in the vinyl bench. The apple pie a la mode was delicious as advertised. Betty couldn't help but tease the couple. You know, everyone says my pie is worth dying for. If you two decide to jump, could you leave a note saying that my apple pie was the reason you jumped? All three chuckled. Kyle became serious and asked, Julia, do you mind if I ask why you decided to attempt suicide? Hank, my boyfriend. Sorry, let there be an ex-boyfriend. And I have been exclusive for three years. Now I know that I was the only one who was exclusive. In any case, I was sure that he was my one and only. I moved in with him two years ago when we got engaged. A year later, I started asking when we would get married. He kept saying that now was not the right time and got angry every time I said anything about marriage. I found out why. One evening, when I returned to our apartment after work, my fiancé was sitting in the living room with a curly blonde girl with huge breasts and an ass practically on his lap. He announced that he had decided to move in with his new girlfriend and kick me out. Until then, I had no idea that he had another girlfriend. I think my charms weren't big enough for him. It was his apartment anyway, so I had no legal reason to stop him from showing me the door. I begged, humiliated myself, and cried. I cried a lot. As I was leaving, Hank laughed and said that he had already cleaned out our joint bank accounts as well. I was devastated. I had nowhere to go and no money to get anywhere. I was too embarrassed to call anyone I knew. Moreover, I couldn't call my parents because they didn't like Hank from the very beginning. They told me I was a fool for moving in with him without being married. The prospect of hearing I told you so was unbearable for me. I felt bad enough as it was. At first I wanted to take revenge on him and his new slut, but I didn't have the guts or the gun to kill them. Then I decided that the best way I could take revenge on them was to haunt them for the rest of my life like a ghost by committing suicide. I thought the easiest way was to jump off the bridge. What are you going to do now? I don't know now that you stopped me. I returned to where I was when I left his apartment. I have nowhere to go and I don't know what to do. I open my soul to you. Now what's your story? Kyle began with a deep breath. Carol and I dated for several years and got married as soon as we graduated from college. This evening I came home from work and saw another car in the driveway. I had no idea what awaited me. In the living room I saw my wife Carol sitting next to a strange man. Her packed suitcases were waiting at the door. I barely had time to say, what the fuck, before she yelled at me to shut up and listen. 
Kyle, I thought I loved you when we were dating, but really more than anything, I wanted to get away from my parents. When you and I started having sex, it felt so good that I thought I had everything. Good sex and the chance to get away from my parents is why I agreed to get married. However, it didn't take us long for our lives to become S-A-U-C-O-N-Y. As the boring years of living with you became increasingly boring, I decided I deserved more than just settle for you. I didn't know what I deserved until Daryl came to work for our company. Our personalities clicked almost immediately. It didn't take us long to bond. When we had sex, it was amazing compared to what we had with you. Kyle, you're a good guy, but Daryl is handsome, charming, smart, rich, and a real stud in bed. Well, he has it all what you are not. Believe me, I am doing you a favor by leaving our marriage now, even though you may not feel that way right now. My departure now gives you enough time to find a woman who is willing to settle for the pleasant and the boring. I'm leaving tonight. I've already taken half the money from our account and savings. You can take this house. Our lawyers can work on the rest. Carol and the idiot took her bags and left. Oh, I'll send you the address to send the divorce papers to. I advise you to be fair to me, otherwise you will regret it. No goodbye, no last hug, no goodbye kiss. I stood there in shock long after they left with him. Like you, Julia, I decided that instead of killing, I would take revenge by blaming her for causing my suicide. Now I wonder if she would even care if I was dead. Heck, she could be happy because she would inherit all my property when I die. I need to think about something else. Kyle, is this offer to stay in your house still valid? I need somewhere to stay until I decide what to do. I mean, if you don't mind. Well, they say misery loves company, and we're both miserable, so why not? Just follow me in your car. Kyle, thank you. You're welcome. They went to his house. Julia was shown the guest bedroom and bathroom that they would have to share. Julia didn't bring her pajamas, so Kyle gave her one of his university sweatshirts. They drank quite a lot of wine before they began to feel sleepy. Considering the emotional state they were at at the beginning of the evening, the fall to exhaustion was strong and fast. They talked the next day over morning coffee. Julia asked if Kyle would go with her to pick up some of her things from the apartment she shared with Hank. She didn't think he would be rude, but she thought that if Kyle had been there, he wouldn't have done anything. Kyle agreed. Julia called Hank and told him she was coming to pick up her things. A woman with a cart is easier for a mare, was his answer. Tears welled up in her eyes, but she managed not to cry. She muttered something about lost years. When they got to the apartment, Julia and Kyle were greeted by Hank and his new girlfriend, Susan. Hank announced that he had put the rest of Julia's things in trash bags. I didn't have enough clean bags, so some bags might have trash in them. That was enough for Kyle. He had an idea. Kyle shouted to Susan, Tiffany, baby, is it really you? Oh my God, you look great. How long ago was this? He came up, hugged, picked up, and spun the frightened blonde. She broke free from his grip and pushed him away. What the hell are you doing? My name is Susan not Tiffany, and I've never seen you before in my life. Tiffany, how can you not remember? You said every time we met that I was your favorite John of all time. So now you're Susan. I still decided that Tiffany was your professional name. I never knew your real name until now. I'm glad to see you've settled down with one man. Lucky you. I know that it is very difficult to leave the profession. Hank shouted, What the hell is he talking about, Susan? What's the story with him being your John? Were you a prostitute? No, no, I've never been a prostitute. He's lying. Kyle chimed in. Oops, my fault, Tiff. I assumed he was the guy you fell in love with. We better take your things and run, Julia, Susan demanded. Wait, tell him I'm not some slut named Tiffany. Tell him I'm not a prostitute. Sorry, Hank. Clearly this must be a case of mistaken identity. Come to think of it, she's just a little bit like Tiffany. I made a stupid mistake. I am sorry. Kyle, Julia, and the trash bags quickly disappeared to the sounds of loud swearing in the apartment. Apparently, from the sound of it, at least one piece of glassware had already bought the farm that evening, and there was still the whole night ahead. 
As soon as they jumped into the car and sped away, Julia asked, Was Hank's girlfriend a prostitute? I don't know that. And with a wide grin, Kyle added, And at least for a while, Hank will be wondering about that. They both laughed. Julia kissed Kyle on the cheek and said, Thank you, Kyle. For what? For getting a little revenge on me and making me laugh. I didn't think I'd ever be able to laugh again. They returned to his home and celebrated the event. Julia put her clothes away and returned to join Kyle on the living room couch. She poured some wine while Kyle drank his beer. They began discussing work schedules and household responsibilities. At the end, Julia giggled. Julia, what's so funny now? We, we talk like an old married couple, she changed her voice. It's late, dear. Let's go to bed, but I warn you, I have a headache. Kyle responded in an emphatically rude voice. You always say that. He then became serious. This dialogue is too close to reality in my case. I haven't had much of a sex life in the last six months. Although obviously my wife had. He looked sad. I'm sorry I brought this up, Kyle. I hope you don't think I was trying to tease you about your lack of sex life. Stop right now. Julia, we're both fresh victims of abandonment. We are both fragile and vulnerable right now. I hate to mention it, but it may be difficult for us to live in the same house given our emotional state right now. Given this, I don't think it would be a good idea for us to quickly jump into new relationships with each other or anyone else. I admit that the idea of revenge sex sounds good, and you are certainly attractive enough to seduce me, but I would feel guilty for taking advantage of you. I think that sex should be done out of love and not out of mutual self-pity. I guess what I'm saying is, just let's take our time and see what happens between us without any pressure. Right now, I'm only interested in friendship and helping each other heal and move on. Okay, Kyle. I will try to stop bothering you as soon as possible. Please, I didn't say that to offend you. I want you to take your time and do what you think is right for you. He paused in despair. Damn, I can't seem to do anything right with a woman. He began to cry. Julia grabbed his hand. I'm sorry, Kyle. Apparently, I'm not very good at talking to men either. Your idea about taking things slow is a good one. We have the same goals. I want to be your friend, too. She hugged him and headed to her bedroom. Then she turned and said, Thanks for the compliment. The next few weeks went well. Indeed, it took some time to get used to each other's habits. They spent a lot of time talking about each other's families and what happened in their recent failed relationships. The biggest discussions were about whether they felt guilty or not, and if so, to what extent they caused their relationships with Hank and Carol to end. Both assured each other that it was, of course, mostly not his or her fault, but both still felt some guilt that it had ended. Having someone to talk to who had an idea of what the breakup felt like helped. Every time Kyle received a letter about his divorce, Julia was there to comfort him. They planned to celebrate when his divorce was finalized. Every time something reminded Julia of the good times with Hank, she started crying. Kyle offered his shoulder and sympathized. It seemed that each time she came to her senses, faster and faster. Such episodes became increasingly rare. Kyle was grateful to Julia in many ways. Her income helped offset the loss of income due to Carol's departure. This gave him money for a lawyer and the time he needed to fight Carol's unexpected demands for a settlement. It was obvious that she or Daryl were trying to get Kyle to agree to a deal that was favorable to her, in the hopes that in his frustration, just to end it all, he would give in. Looks like they're not done mocking him yet. Kyle also realized how much having a woman in the house helped him. He was lucky to have a woman who seemed to care about him. It didn't take him long before he believed he could share his innermost thoughts without fear of negative criticism. The only problem he had with her living in the same one-bathroom house with him was that from time to time he would see her partially dressed and feel aroused. She was a very attractive woman. Julia and Kyle established a daily routine that seemed to suit both of them. They didn't go out to eat often because they were both saving money for when Julia moved out, and then they wouldn't have a financial partner to cover living expenses. One of their favorite pastimes was watching old movies, 
eating popcorn and drinking wine and beer. One evening, the doorbell rang. Julia walked to the door and opened it. It was Carol. Carol was shocked to see a girl in the house and wearing only an oversized sweatshirt and panties. Julia asked, Can I help you? Carol snorted. Yes, you can get out of my way. She passed Julia on her way to the living room, where she saw Kyle sitting on the love seat in gym shorts and a t-shirt. Carol quickly assessed the situation. Well, it certainly didn't take you long to forget me, but maybe not. I bet you two were doing this before I moved out. Julia walked up to Kyle, who was already standing, and put her arm around his shoulders. Actually, I should thank you for being together. We met at a diner the night you left. After chatting for a while, we immediately realized that we had similar interests, and the incident became a thing of the past. You know, Carol, revenge sex can be as good sex as any other sex. I was so happy with him that night that I've been living with him ever since. She reached out and kissed Kyle passionately, and then continued, Carol, I hope that someday I would see you and be able to thank you for what you let go of Kyle. I admit I was a little wild in college, but it gave me experience that I can take into the bedroom. I can honestly say that Kyle is the best I have ever had and will ever have, if I have anything to say about it. Carol was seething with anger. Get out, bitch. Kyle and I need to talk. Kyle was about to object when Julia said, I do not mind. I'm not jealous of her. Julia kissed Kyle again, this time even more passionately than before. Walking down the stairs, she looked back at Kyle. Baby, what flavor do you want to try tonight? We're out of strawberries. Kyle improvised. A peach? You will get it, lover. Don't stay too long. I wouldn't like to start without you. Oh, and Carol, it was nice to meet you and be a stranger, okay? Julia walked up the stairs and then backed away once she was out of Carol and Kyle's sight. Carol began immediately. Kyle, what's wrong with you? He brought some girl from the street into our house. I hope you asked her to show you her STD reports. I heard that girls like her need to be checked every two weeks. You're wearing a condom with her, aren't you? Kyle ignored her remark. Okay, Carol, why are you here? I told Daryl that I needed to pick up a couple more of my things that I left here. Honestly, I wanted to see how you were doing and how you felt about me after you had time to calm down. I said a lot of hurtful things but they were for Daryl. He's a little insecure and wasn't entirely sure that I really wanted to be with him. Despite what I said in front of Daryl, I didn't really mean it. I missed you, Kyle. She moved closer to him for physical contact, but Kyle moved away. Carol, I admit that I was very upset both by the betrayal and by the way you told me how everything would turn out. I was going to do something really stupid about this before I met Julia. We became instant soulmates as we shared coffee and apple pie at the dinner table. By the way, I can recommend a great apple pie place if you're interested. Anyway, Carol, I now understand better what you described as what happened between you and Daryl. Based on my experience with Julia, I am no longer jealous that you are off with your significant other. But my sympathy goes no further than that. I will not give you more than your fair share of our assets in a divorce. Kyle. I admit, I hoped that you would be unhappy without me. I wanted to offer you to stay in the marriage, but that you would let me live with Daryl and see you on the side. Now, after meeting Julia, I know that I would hate to see you with another woman. Looks like I'll have to choose between you and Daryl. I just cannot. Carol, you have no reason to worry about making a choice. Coming back to me is not an option. I don't know what will happen between me and Julia, but she helped me move on, without you. If you still have any feelings for me, stop fighting and settle the divorce matter. But Kyle, I love you. And I loved you, in the past tense. Carol left in tears. Julia returned to the living room and hugged Kyle. They remained in each other's arms for a while. Kyle finally pulled away and said, let's go to bed. Julia whispered, can I get into bed with you and just snuggle? That's what I was hoping for, thank you. I'm shaking from the experience. Thanks for what? For hitting Carol's nerve. They both grinned. By the way, what were you talking about when you said we were out of strawberries? I once had a boyfriend who was fond of edible gels, which he injected into my secret places. Too much information? 
no, rather curiously obscene. You actually have a peach scent for, well, you know? No, but who said I don't taste better in my natural form? After a couple of months, Julia decided it was time to do something. Either she had to move out or propose to Kyle so they could become intimate. It was killing her to be so close and not touch the way she wanted. She wanted him to know that she was no longer so fragile that he had to worry about hurting her feelings. Then she got a phone call. It shook her to the core. Julia was sitting on the couch in a coma-like state when Kyle entered. He saw Julia and asked what was the matter. She said, Hank called. He apologized and wants me to come back. You're not going to, are you, after what he did to you? I don't know. I spent several good years with him and I still have to leave you soon. Will you have to leave me? Why? Did I make you sad somehow? Did I scare you? I can't help it if I want to touch you. I'm so attracted to you. Where the hell does this come from? I gave you every hint possible that I wanted more. I didn't think you wanted to be intimate with me. Then to hell with the hints. He grabbed Julia in his arms and began caressing every inch of her body while they tried to take off her clothes. His mouth attacked every piece of bare skin that was exposed. She counterattacked in the same way. Julia paused to speak. You're right. To hell with all these hints. After three rounds of sex, Julia spoke first. Looks like I was right when I told Carol that you were the best sex I've ever had. What about you? No. The best sex I've ever had will be the next time we have sex. In about 15 minutes. Julia called Hank back and said that his ship had sailed and was sinking quickly. She had the best man she could ever have, especially in the bedroom. You are lying. You know you want my... Julia hung up. The next day, Julia called and said she was late. She offered to buy food on the way home. Shortly after he hung up, there was a knock on the door. It was a beaten, crying Carol. And again, she burst into the living room. She clung to Kyle, who tried to calm her down. Carol, what happened? She sniffled as she said, Daryl. Daryl hit me. I got angry at what he did and said it was stupid to leave you for him. I've never seen him so furious. He said that I should return to you, but with minor physical changes. He slapped me, kicked me, and pulled my hair. Finally, I was able to retreat and ran outside. He did not follow me, but went to the door to shout, Good riddance, bitch. I never intended to marry you anyway. I just wanted to break you up from Kyle. And I did. Kyle, I'm so embarrassed. Can we stop divorce? Are you still with that girl, Julia? Don't you miss what I did for you? Let me show you. She started to undress. Kyle was trying to keep her from doing this when Julia entered. It seemed to her that he was helping Carol undress. She turned to leave. Kyle shouted, Don't take another step, Julia. I won't let you walk away thinking I'm cheating on you. Turn around and listen to what I have to say. Julia was still crying, but she stopped. He grabbed his soon-to-be ex-wife. Carol, your time with me is over. You will not return here, and I will not join you anywhere else. We'll get divorced in a couple of days. Thanks to Julia, I continue to live my life. You need to mind your own business. I will help you financially so that you can start working in a new place if you need to leave, Daryl. Could I stay? No. My future wife and I don't want to help you that much. Julia gasped. Future wife? Does it mean... Yes, Julia. Will you marry me? I apologize for the situation. I was not... Before he could finish his sentence, Julia threw herself into his arms and began kissing him. Carol took the hint and left silently. A couple of days later, the newlyweds were sitting on the couch, admiring her new engagement ring. They talked about children and whether they should move to a bigger house. As they settled down, the local news started playing on TV. Having read the footnote to the fragment that had just begun, the shocked Julia screamed, Kyle, look at this! The reporter announced, a local couple jumped or fell from the Red River Bridge this morning. It looks like there was some kind of confrontation. Witnesses said they spotted two people on the bridge shouting about who had the right to jump first. Apparently someone in the crowd started shouting, Jump! Jump! They apparently began to struggle and soon fell or jumped 125 feet into the river. The fast current probably carried their bodies away. They never appeared on the surface, as far as observers could tell.
Channel 5. News interviewed a waitress at a local diner who said the couple had been to her diner before. Betty, tell us what happened. Well, they came, drank coffee, and ate my apple pie. I think I heard the names, Hank and Carol. Anyway, they said my pie was so good it was to die for. The next thing I remember is them jumping like a swallow off that damn bridge. I thought they were just joking, even though my apple pie was really good. Thank you, Betty. Another day of strange news and free advertising from Ray Strickland of Channel 5 News. Julia and Kyle looked at each other. They had no idea how to react. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.